how do you feel we can solve some of those kind of back and forth and like treating the designer as just someone who just paints on lipstick or treating the developer as just someone who is a, like a very robotic make this exactly without having any kind of heart or emotion? Well, I guess the, the ultimate thing is to feel included, right? Yeah. And the times that I, that's worked for me is when I've been brought in early. Like even if it's um, at an agency, if it's been part of the, the product pitch, even if I'm just sort of hiding in the back of the room or, or whatever, I'm sort of there for the very start where the sort of ideas are being talked about um, that might, you know, after some negotiation, actually come down to something I, I will end up developing. Yeah. Um, the uh, agency I worked at did it very well where you would have... Um, all the designs would be on the wall, so I, I would be able to sort of walk up to them and sort of see you know, what would become my job very soon. How did you find um, that worked? I mean, did that change the way you developed or approached design stuff or so, the relationships? So, I mean, when I first worked at the, at the agency, I kind of, when I walked in and saw all of these printouts on the wall, it felt very low tech. I was like, what? You know, we work digitally, why have we got you know, printouts of things? But just being able to sort of have an overview of everything like that. Seeing the project, like, like the map of the project almost. Yeah, yeah, and to be able to sort of just sort of glance over it as, you know, as I was walking past and go, ooh, hang on, like either that bit is going to be particularly difficult and I know a slightly, a very similar thing that's going to be so much easier, or see something and go, ooh, that looks exciting. I've got ideas about we could animate that or do something. Absolutely. And I could go straight to the designer and say, you know, and I, and I felt like I was then sort of part of the project. If, if I was saying like, oh, let's, let's move these things around, let's animate them, and the designer would be like, Jake, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> Don't ever talk to me or, or my children ever again. But, they, but then sometimes it'd be like, oh yeah, there's, there's, there's a hint of a good idea in there. Let me work on that. We advocate like a process called design sprints, which is all about getting everybody working together. So you come up with an idea or sort of like everyone shares like the challenges and you come up with ideas together. It's so like developers, but engineers. Is, is that designers working together like, no. or is that the, the, the product working together? It's everybody involved in, in, in the product itself. So um, typically you have a stakeholder from finance, from marketing, from developer, from design, from research, everyone and the, the big boss. Um, and everyone's kind of sharing and going through this like typically four to five day process where they're learning about the challenge, coming up with ideas, um, voting on it, creating a prototype and testing it. Mm -hmm. And we find that this kind of doing things um, collaboratively and also bit part of the process, you're in a room where you're writing everything on the wall and you have lots of sticky note paper, um, allows everyone to empathize each other's position and also respect the authority of the knowledge that everyone else has in the room. Otherwise what happens is you just have this conveyor belt that marketing will come in and say, no, you don't know what you're, you're just a, a painter. You're just a, you know, a whatever, a builder. Just do these things that I, where they may not necessarily have the expertise to kind of know like how UX or behavior or performance or accessibility works. Well, I, I think in the same way that, um, that we're talking about, there's, there's a benefit to a, a designer knowing, you know, some of the development tools, and, and I, I think this, it cuts both ways. I think a developer should know their way around like Photoshop, Sketch, or, you know, especially whichever tool that the designer uses. The, the product manager needs to know both, right? They need to have an appreciation for both to, to understand that it's not just, you know, off you go in a room and come back with, you know, here's a blank piece of paper, you, yeah, you go away and you come back with gold, you know? Like since joining Google and listening to say you and say uh, Paul Lewis, like performers, it's like really been horrified of like, my God, all these things I've been creating, which is like, you know, really badly performing, but it's like, how would you know? Or how would well, I know rather? Well, it's, I guess it's, it's more down to the developer, isn't it? In that case, I think too, I, I, cause it's not like, Things don't get slower the more colours you use, or, or necessarily like the more complex the shapes are. It, it, I think it is down to the, the developer to sort of uh, identify maybe that for some reason there's some uh, part of this design altogether is resulting in something slow. It's like if we remove that bit there, we are 90, you know, we're, we're like twice as fast or something. Can, Absolutely. You know, can, we, can we do that? And then it's a negotiation from, from that point. So I suppose how we can solve this appreciation or sort of lack of appreciation um, is working closely together, I guess, ultimately, is what we're saying. Yeah. Which sounds like very obvious, but we need to talk more. Well, yeah, yeah, and sort of being together from the start. Um, so then, you know, the, the, I, with seeing a design, I can see how uh, the designer got there. I, I saw that sort of process, and I was able to catch things, uh, you know, early on. Because uh, I, I know that the sort of ideal is for everything to be sort of iterative development, but in so many, like, especially agency life, I'm busy working on the other projects yeah. that's, that's finishing while the design is working. But on still the having one. some sort of input or conversation beforehand. Yeah. So by the time I actually come to work on it, it's like, oh, I, I, you I've, feel I've, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've seen that develop and I've influenced that bit and I'm kind of comfortable with it.
Well, maybe it's kind of a spectrum, you know, like on one side you have no processes and no data to validate your ideas and on the other side you have too much of it and maybe now the whole UX world is steering slightly more towards this too much.